Hey everybody, Sergeant Tony here. Today we're talking about uh, something that I get asked a lot, and that is about calorie burning. Before we go, before we go into that, let me just say that I didn't design 20 years ago the, my exercise program. I didn't design it as a weight loss program. I've never advertised what we do as a weight loss program. And the reason why I would never do that is because it would be false advertising. Um, I don't, I can't take credit for something that diet actually does. 80% of your weight loss success is diet. I get asked still though, what exercise, Tony, what exercise is the best for losing weight? And I say, well, this is the exercise right here. So what you want to do is you extend your arms forward and then you wiggle your fingers and you keep the wiggling things away from your mouth. And that is the best. Yes, yes, I know it's, it's silly and it's, it's, but it, it's intended to make a point. And the point being is diet is king where weight loss is concerned. 80%, exercise maybe 20%. Nonetheless, people will still say, Tony, what exercise burns the most number of calories? So let's talk about that. Before we talk about that, let's talk about the BMR. The BMR stands for basal metabolic rate. It's also, could also be called your uh, resting metabolic rate. That means essentially how many calories does your body burn just being you? So your heart rate, respiration, circulation, all of the things, just the moving around, all of the things that are required for you to be you, for your body to function, requires a certain number of calories. So the BMR, uh, it, there's, there are calculators that you can find online to, to punch in numbers for your basal metabolic rate to find out how many calories your body burns in a 24 hour period just being you. So that being said, and there are variables that go into that and we'll talk about it in a second. So that being said, a couple of other questions regarding this. Tony, how many calories does our boot camp workouts burn? That is also kind of dependent on these variables I'll talk to you about in a second. But on average, about 400 calories plus or minus 100. The exercise that burns the most number of calories in an hour is actually boxing. If you were to if you were to box for an hour straight, that would burn up the most number of calories. After that, and none of us, even the professional boxers only go for a three minute round, they, can't, they couldn't last a whole hour of continuous boxing. So beyond that then, it's running. So you would think, oh, well then running is, is, is the best. And for calorie burning in, a, in one hour, it is. But here's the thing. Walking also does the same thing as running. When you run, on average, you're gonna burn about 100 calories per mile. Same thing is true for walking. If you walk a, a mile, you're also gonna burn about 100 calories. Now, there are variables and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. The thing is that in an hour's time, if you're running, you're gonna cover more, hour, uh, more miles than you would if you were walking. So that's why running gets the uptick that in, a, in an hour's time, in an hour's time, the runner is gonna burn more calories than the walker. But if you were looking at only calories per mile, if the runner runs a mile and the walker walks a mile, both of them have, have burned essentially the same number of calories, about 100 calories. If you think about then a, a donut, and I love donuts, so don't, don't uh, no haters. If you think about a donut being 250 calories, what you would have to do is run or walk two and a half miles to burn that off. So think about that the next time you reach for that second or third or sixth donut. I may or not, may not have been guilty of some of that myself. So now let's talk about this. Let me give you, let me give you my graphics here. This is, this is very fancy graphics I've got for you. So here's your BMR, basal metabolic rate. Then the max number of calories burned in one hour, that's gonna be running right here. Here are the, the variables that are plugged into the equation as to whether or not you burn uh, a maximum number of calories for an hour. These things, these six things, the first two you really can't control. I can't control my genetics. Uh, I can't really control my gender. So how, whatever my genetics are, 
I didn't do a good job of picking parents. I should have picked more athletic parents. See, so you are you are you inherited certain limitations and certain advantages physically through genetics. Gender, I'm a guy, so that's going to be me. Now these other things we can adjust. We can make some adjustments to these. So muscle mass. The more muscle you have, the more calories you will burn. The more muscle you have, the more calories you'll burn. Then duration. How long are you going for in your exercise? The longer the duration, of course, the, the more calories will be burned. Intensity. How, how intense are you working? How hard are you working? How hard are you working? Then um, your weight and your height, those things we can, we can't adjust uh, our height. We can't make any adjustment about height, but we can make some adjustment about weight. Heavier people are going to burn more calories than uh, lighter, thinner people. Uh, a man who's 250 pounds and that's mostly fat, when he, when he runs that one mile, he's going to burn more calories than the 125 pound cross, high school cross country kid. So the the more weight that you have, the more calories you're going to burn. So these are the six things, the six variables that go into determining how, how much, how many calories you burn in a particular, uh, in an hour. So all of that being said, all of that being said, it's important for us to, maybe for you to know that, that the calorie burn that you have is somewhat dependent on these, well, they're not somewhat dependent, they're actually dependent on these things. If you want to lose weight, you have to restrict the number of calories that you take in. Now, let me just say a, a little word about, uh, I'll call them fad diets. Keto, Kato, Atkins, Beyonce diet, name whatever the diet is. And if it works, all diets work in exactly the same way. They are low calorie diets in disguise. I don't care how they're packaged. I don't care how they, they may come across. They're just low calorie, uh, low calorie diets in disguise. And that's all that it is. You have to create a deficit in your body of calories so that you're taking in fewer calories than you're burning, right? Think of it that way. If I take in fewer calories than I'm burning, then I'm going to lose weight. It's not that it's not that complicated, but it can be a little bit difficult, I understand. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the weight loss uh, issues or the calorie burn. I, I failed to mention the flip side of the coin, and it's really not a flip side of the coin. It's something called the afterburn. No, it doesn't have anything to do with eating spicy food or anything like that. What it has to do with is when we are finished exercising, once we finished exercising, and uh, we're at rest, your body is still burning calories. Your body is still burning calories for a while after you get finished with your, with your workout. Now the workout could be a, a cardio workout, it could be a, a boot camp style, full body strength training workout, either one, both workouts are going to result in an, an afterburn, additional calories burned even after you're finished with the exercise. Now, exercise science tends to lean pretty heavily on the, uh, the strength training workouts having a, having a higher calorie burn and a, that, that, uh, that has a longer duration after the workouts are over, as opposed to the, the uh, cardio running workouts. But what I want you to know is that in addition to the calories that you're burning while you're exercising, Given the exercise that you're doing, given the workout that you're doing, you can burn additional calories after that. Now, a little word of warning, especially as it pertains to uh, runners. When I've done half marathon and full marathon training, it was not uncommon after uh, a long training run on a Saturday morning that we would reward ourselves with a trip to Perkins and a big stack of pancakes and hash browns and goodies like that. Well, we weren't really going to, we rewarded ourselves, but after that was over, we really had too many calories. We didn't burn enough calories during the workout to compensate for all of the calories that we rewarded ourselves with after the workout was over. That's a real temptation for uh, post-swim. I'm ravenous after a swim. Uh, post-run, 
Uh, but after a, a, a workout, after a boot camp workout, for example, I don't feel the same sort of, of hunger pains. So rem just so that you know th that you get an additional calorie burn after the workout is over. If you want more calories burned after the workout is over, you need to be doing some strength training. Hey guys, wanted to add one more thing before we close this subject out about uh, calorie burn in um, exercise. And that is a reminder that uh, the afterburn is cool. The, the afterburn is a, is a great thing. When you stack it up against what really is going on when you lose weight, as you remember, only 20% of your weight loss success happens because of exercise. You still have this 80%, 80%, 80 of your weight loss success has to do with diet, how much, or how little you consume. That's, that's the, that's what I want you to, what I want you to take away from this is that um, while exercise does burn calories and the way that we can manipulate or alter the way that we approach exercise, duration, intensity, all of those things that we talked about, while that's an important factor to to at least consider as you're looking at exercise as a as a weight loss uh, modality, what you really need to put your focus on is that exercise is only 20%. Diet is king. I, I've had boot campers through the years that have lost no weight at all, been with me faithfully three, four, five times a week for years on end and never lose any weight. And that's completely understandable because if you don't alter your diet, then you're then you're not going to lose the weight. Now they're absolutely fit. They're not obese and they're not and they're not couch potatoes. They're fit people, but they haven't lost any weight in the process. On the other hand, I've had people who have been with me for years, and then they they told me, Tony, I'm I'm going to get serious about losing weight, and I say, okay, well, great. And then six months later, they report to me that they had lost 20 pounds. They continued to come to class just as faithfully as before. They can, can continue to do that. But the only thing that they did differently is that they altered their diet. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, that's it for this particular subject. If you find value in what I'm doing with these uh, educational videos, tips and ideas uh, as it pertains to health and fitness, then uh, please subscribe and, and then click on the little uh, bell icon and that'll give you a notification when we've um, uploaded a new video. Okay, see you next time.